Hey gang, Private Jack here. Welcome to part three, the amendment uh, to my series on how to decompile a valve model, get it into Blender, fiddle around with it a little bit, recompile it, and get it back into Source Filmmaker as a different model. Okay, so Crowbar. This particular session is going to be on Crowbar, and it was before. But uh, as you heard me say, welcome to part three, uh, the A version, simply due to the fact that, as I mentioned in the intro and in part one, where I ch showed you where to go and get the models, it looked like Zach Macaw was just on the verge of pushing the button on a new version of Crowbar. Well, I got my videos all done and released them to YouTube probably at the very same instant that he pushed the button on the new release. So my old video was on 0 0.24, and the newest version of Crowbar out there is 0 0.27 now. I was hoping that I wouldn't have to redo the video, but when I went and I pulled the actual version down, what I found was... Wow, what a change. And man, it's all for the better. So in this particular video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to get it, download it, install it, and use it to de decompile a model. Okay, so first off, what we're going to do is we're going to head off to Steam. We're going to go into the community page and head for the home, come down here to find people and groups, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in there crowbar tool. That'll bring up a list of everything related to crowbar, and basically this is the group that we want to go to, the crowbar source engine modding tool group. This is Zach McCaw's little group only has 1,670 people as members, and man, there's a lot of people out there using the tool. Join up. That's all I can say. You'll see that I'm not joined here. It's simply due to the fact that I'm on Steam under my alter ego. Anyway, what you do is come down here, click on the download crowbar link. It'll take you to this particular download page. As I said, most current version is 0 0.27, and talking with Zach, it looks like he's going to try and put out monthly releases on this tool. This thing is like active, 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 and Zach is really great at doing the, uh, the updates here. Anyway, to get the tool, it comes down as a 7Z file, which is a compressed file format. Click on the link. It'll take you to the download page, click download, and for ease of use, just put it on your desktop. Save as, and on your desktop. That's how fast it comes down. Okay, we can close out of here, close out of here for now, and we'll be going back there in a couple of minutes. So, here's Crowbar down on my desktop. And to install it, it is this simple. I have seven Z files associated to WinRAR. So all I have to do is right click on it and drag it somewhere on my desktop, drop it, and click Extract to. And poof, here's Crowbar. If I drill into the folder, what I'm going to find is a Crowbar EXE file and a data folder. You can put this folder anywhere on your computer and create a shortcut to it. And basically it will launch as long as the Crowbar EXE has the data folder in the same folder as the EXE file. Okay, so I'm going to delete that little shortcut there. Two ways to launch it, launch it through a shortcut, or just double click on Crowbar EXE.
this is the graphics interface that is now in Crowbar. And I'm going to show you the difference. Oh, come on, stop that. I'm going to show you the difference between this tool and the last version. So let me see. Do I still have Crowbar here? Uh, link to my Crowbar. Where is it? Crowbar 024. Okay, so here's Crowbar 024. And this is Crowbar 027. Look at the difference. There is a ton of stuff here. Okay, so the layout has changed a little bit. Uh, not only is this a decompiler, but it's also a compiling tool. And if I go into the compiler tab here, look at the difference. The game setups, basically, there weren't that many before. Look at this. I think he's hit every possible game you can uh, that will that you can compile a Valve model for with this particular version. Okay, so he's also added a feature that I really really like and that's the define bones feature and when I get into uh, which means I have to rewrite my entire uh, compiling models in blender thing completely because that is such a useful tool for me okay anyway let's come back here and get a model actually decompiled to decompile a model using this tool, all you have to do is know where the MDL file lives. Or if you want to decompile complete folders, you can actually decompile folders and subfolders with this thing. So all I want to do is decompile a model. And the model that we're going to decompile is the photo badge um, that you saw in the intro. So that photo badge lives in Source Filmmaker game. It's a TF2 item. Or, yeah, a TF2 item. I'm going to drill into TF, come down here to Models. It's a player item, so I have to go into the Players folder, into Items. It's an all class item. And it's called Photo Badge. So I just click on one of the files there, type PH, and it should take me right to it. That one right there. So all I have to do is click on that. Now what I can do is I can decompile to the default folder. And what that is going to do is it's going to create a folder called decompiled 0 0.27 under the all class folder that I pulled the model out of. I don't want to do that because I don't want to go looking all over my computer f looking for models that I've decompiled. So all I'm going to do is override that default by clicking on full path. And I want to put it on my desktop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the browse and just point to my desktop. From there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new folder and I'm going to call this photo project. I'm going to drill into that folder and click open. So when I push a decompile button, my decompiled files should go right here. Now let's look at some of these options. Oh, there's so many. Okay, so basically the options, QC file. I want to include a QC file. It'll help me when it comes time to create the QC file for the new model that I'm going to create. It's already written. Group into QCI files, I'm not really going to go into. Uh, it's a way of taking certain elements of a QC, putting it in a separate file, and then all you do is call those separate uh, those separate QCI files to build your model when it comes to compile time. 
because this is such a simple model, I'm not going to go there. Okay, include defined bones. Um, because the model that we're working with only has one bone, I'm not going to have to worry about that. But if my model had many, many bones and I start adding bones to the model, then what I need to do, and some of the, uh, before I go there, if I start adding mo bones to a model and I don't associate mesh to them, when I compile a model, the bones that don't have mesh assigned will disappear. What I have to do is I have to actually define all the bones in the model. And there's a way of going about doing that which is above the level of this particular tutorial. Reference mesh. Yes, we want the reference mesh because that's the main mesh of the actual item. Now, if you're working with Left for Two, Left for Dead Two survivors, the right hand has a little glitch in it, and Zek has written this compiler to fix that glitch when you decompile the model. So, if you're working with survivors from the Left for Dead Two, click that on, and it's good to see that. Okay, that's great. There was a little bug in the old version that if I clicked on a uh, add button here or one of the checkboxes, this would actually go back to the original uh, folder uh, definition, and it looks like that's fixed. Okay, level of detail mesh files. If the model has level of detail files, you can extract those as well. And what a level of detail file is, is in a game file, in a game player, if the camera backs away from the, uh, from the player, the model will start collapsing in on itself so that there isn't as much mesh being displayed and it frees up resources for models that are far away. The physics model uh, the physics mesh, what that is, is the collision model, and we don't really need physics models in Source Filmmaker, so I'm going to click that one off. Vertex animations, this is if the model has facial flexes or any type of flexes that move any of the mesh on the model. And basically you want these things for things like uh, uh, player models, HWMs, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, it's all this stuff up here, the eyes and everything else. So basically, that's what the VTA file is. Bone animations, if there are embedded sequences in the model, like the idle sequence, ragdoll sequence, uh, there could be others that are actually embedded right into the model. This will pull those animations out and put them into separate SMD files so that you can use them for editing later. And basically it says, give something that we didn't have the option to do was either put these in the uh, project folder or put them in a subfolder in an Anims subfolder. I like all my SMDs in the same place so that I can write my QCs quicker. Gives you the option to bring in procedural bones. And what this is is QC information on uh, jiggle bones. And basically bring the jiggle bone uh, VR, uh, VRD file into, uh, into Actually, I don't know if it writes the VRD file or not, but anyway, make a long story short, the procedure bones are things like jiggle bones, and this will actually write the information to the QC for the jiggle bones. Now, if, <laughs> if you're downloading folders and subfolders and... Uh, I guess what this is, is it will actually create a new folder for each model that it decompiles. Like I say, this thing was only released yesterday. I haven't had a real good chance to explore all the functions of it. 
I'm not sure what format for Stricker importers means. Uh, it's something that I'll have to talk to Zach about, but I'm going to check that on just to see what that does. Uh, create log files, yes, and I want debug information uh, in the form of comments in the QC, and I want extra debug information files so that if I do encounter a bug, what I can do is I can fire those files back to Zek and he can explore them to find out what actually caused the error in my decompile. So that's basically all the stuff that you need to do for decompiling a model. What I do is come down here and I click on decompile. It'll write some information there in the screen here. There's my decompile log. And it, that used to be on a separate tab altogether, but now it's right here. I can actually walk through and have a quick look and see if there were any errors. I uh, like that. And if I come into my photo projects folder now, I should find all that information and basically my SMD files for the entire model. Okay, so here I've got my log file. I've got unknown bytes text. I've got debug information. If I have a problem with the actual model when I go to bring it into Blender and I think it's a bug, what I can do is I can come back here to Zex page, go into the discussion area, and right here he has a form set up for bug reporting. Click on that, start a new discussion, um, set up some sort of a Dropbox, or find some way of getting those error files to him because he's going to want to see those. Now, if you come back into the discussions and just say, I've got a problem, he's not going to look at this. He's looking here at the bug reports. So basically, that's where you need to put anything that you find going wrong with Crowbar. Okay, I've rambled on here for about 20 minutes now. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to decompile because this is the first time I've actually used the tool, I'm going to try and decompile one of the HWM models from the TF Movies folder, just to see how well this thing does. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to browse. I'm going to come back and go into the TF Movies folder and just a tidbit of information. If you didn't know, uh, Gameplay actually has an HWM model. Come down here to Player. See? And basically what those are are the HWM models used in the close-up shots for kill cam and things like that. You don't see them in Source Filmmaker because the TF folder has a lower priority than the TF Movies folder does, and the models are using the same path and file names as the ones that are in the TF HWM folders. So basically, the, you're getting the TF Movies ones over the game player ones. Anyway, just a little bit of information for you. So I'm going to drill into TF Movies, Models, Player, HWM, and I'm going to grab the Sniper model. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to go Browse. I'm going to go back to my desktop. I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm going to call this Sniper Project. Hit Enter. Now this is something that we could never do with the old Canon fodder um, decompilers, is work with the HWM models. The old compilers just would not decompile them. There's too much new information in them. So, and 
yeah, the old compile, uh, decompilers were great in their day. They did the job perfectly for what we needed them to do. But when Valve went to pipeline and changed all the file folders and everything else where everything lived, they changed the, uh, the, the game cache files from GCF to VPK. Uh, they did a whole hockey sock of changes that just made the old compilers so hard to work with. We could get them to work if we fiddled with them, but now we've got this tool and this is it. This is where you need to go is with this particular tool. Anyway, now that I've got that set up, I'm going to, let's see, I don't need the right hand fixes. I'm going to leave the physics mesh turned on and I'm going to place the anims the animation files in the Anims folder in this particular case. Uh, I'm not going to group into QCIs. I'm not going to include the Q defined bone. And I'm going to check this one off. I just want to see what that is. Okay. Anyway, click on decompile. And away she goes. Come in into my sniper project folder and here are all the files that I asked for from that particular model. I've got my QC file, I've got the VTA file containing the facial flexes, I've got all the body groups. There are no LOD files here because the half or the HWM models for Source Filmmaker don't use them. Uh, Here's my debug information, and up here it created that uh, Anims file uh, folder. There's my ragdoll animation and my ref animation. So yeah, it's compiling great. Now I just want to show you something here on the QC. When it comes time to work with the QC for one of these big models that uh, you've decompiled and it was an HWM type model, if you open up the QC, what you're going to do is you're going to come in here and you're going to find all the SMD, VTA, flex pairs, flexes, and <coughs> scrolling down here, you're going to find all the uh, flex controllers identified, the local VARs all identified. When you get down here into the actual uh, flex assignments, you're going to find a lot of this stuff. And what this is, I had a quick conversation with Zek on it, is this is information that is <coughs> DMX specific. And we haven't gotten to the point where we can actually decompile a model into DMX source format yet. I believe Zek is working on it when it's going to be available have no idea and I'm not pushing him for him because he's doing such a great job with this one uh, but anyway that's what all that is all the primary um, SMD type relationships or um, uh, flex assignments have been found there's over 40 flex assignments here but like I say, all this stuff is related to DMX specific uh, information. So, but moving on down the, the QC file. And there's a lot of it. Okay, so body groups sets up the body groups for us. It uh, sets up all the eye positions and the max deflections. It reads everything it can possibly read out of the model file and writes the QC for you. So it makes QC writing a heck of a lot easier. Hip boxes, bone merges. If I had checked on that defined bones, all the bones would have been defined in the QC. Uh, there's the collision joints. Uh, there should be some, I don't see them. I thought there were some jiggle bones in this model. I don't see them. 
Hmm. I'll have to look at that later. But anyway, that's decompiling a model and the files that are associated to it. We're going to be working with these files in the next sessions. And not the sniper ones, but with the actual um, little guy. This guy. We'll be working with this and in Blender and getting that model off to Source Film Maker. So anyway, with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say Private Jack out.